Right, hello and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be carrying on with our water material. Um, in the previous weeks we have looked at building the mesh, doing the normals and then the opacity and refraction. So today we're going to be building up a little bit more movement into this uh, with some well positioned offset. But before we do that, you might notice that our water is quite sort of dull and lifeless compared to the water of the stream behind. And uh, that's to do with the uh, reflections. Um, and it's actually a really, really simple fix. So um, here we can see we're reflecting the sky um, and we're getting that kind of nice blue color uh, and we're not getting any of that as well. All we need to do is change the default roughness. So by default, this is somewhere about 0.5 roughness, I think. Um, and we want to have it to be nice and smooth and shiny. So all we need to do is plug in a value of zero in our roughness uh, and we will get some reflections. Now this is using the screen space reflections that I've turned on. Um, what that means is it's going to try and reflect what else has been rendered in the screen. Um, so here, this kind of tree in the background should be then visible in our reflections based on the screen space reflections. Uh, bit difficult to see, but um, that's going to give us much more kind of life in our, uh, our material. Um, one other thing we might want to do, uh, if I just open up the existing water here you see yeah we're using a specular value so the default specular for most materials in unreal uh, is 0.5 and that's right for for most things plastics woods stones um, but water uh, has a slightly different specular and so uh, it's not going to make a huge difference if you get to do this um, but it is going to change a little bit of our um, sort of how our reflections are happening and things um, We'll just try this. Give it a sec to compile and save. And hopefully we're getting something a little bit more sort of similar. So if I just put this back to 0.5, which is the default, like I say, you can't really see much difference. Um, but it is uh, technically a little more accurate to have a slightly different reflection. And that's looking better already. So um, what I'm going to do today uh, is a well position offset. So at the moment, our shader, uh, it's completely flat on this plane. Um, we might want to create some movement. Uh, and that's quite easy to do. It's quite a nice, powerful uh, technique. We have this input here, well position offset. So we're going to put in different values um, for different parts of the mesh and we're going to create that kind of like wave uh, effect and to do this I'm just going to put it back to being uh, opaque for now just so that we get that faster render and faster compile times so we're not waiting around and make it a little bit easier to see. So the way this works is by having a um, by having a vector input and it's going to give us that movement of the vertices in that uh, in that direction. Um, and so what I'm going to do, if I start just with time and a sine wave, now this is going to give me values that go up and then down again. And uh, if I just actually just plug this into world position offset, um, we'll see what kind of result we're getting with that. Well, we're moving a little bit. Can you see there's just a little bit of up and down? Quite hard to see in the preview because we're only moving uh, values output here from one to minus one. And so we're moving one centimeter yeah, because Unreal uses those units. So let's multiply by a value to control how much uh, how much we're getting moved by. In this case, if I say, let's say I mean, 50, 50 centimeters is a sort of starting point. And what we'll get, much more movement. Um, everything's moving along the positive three axes. So this is giving us a positive value uh, to a negative value and then we're converting it into a vector uh, and so it's assuming the same values in all three so actually we need to give it a direction now we could use um, 0 0 1 if we consider 0 0 1 as a direction vector it's straight up and so if I multiply this in to my chain we'll see our water material going up and down like so um, 
and that would work that would work for, for flat bodies of water uh, but because this is a waterfall actually we kind of want it to bulge outwards over the water surface um, so rather than using 001 I'm actually going to use the vertex normals so we talked about this before uh, this is the direction of the surface and so in this case in this sphere it's going to sort of pulsate in and outwards um, but in the case of our actual waterfall mesh in the world it's going to sort of pulsate in and outwards as well but the sort of the front you can see is it's kind of yeah taking that sort of shape into account now this is obviously far too much movement um, and far too fast and there's lots of things going wrong with this but we see we're kind of getting uh, at least a starting point to where we might want to be so let's scale this right down to something a bit more reasonable five centimeters there we go maybe something like that now this uh, is is working it's doing what I want but it's completely uniform across the whole mesh the whole thing is um, is bobbing up and down at the same speed or the same um, sort of in sync, in, in sync with itself so the whole thing is going going like this so we need some way of breaking that up and what I'm going to use uh, is the UVs I'm going to use the UVs of the, uh, the, the mesh um, so if I take this UV value here uh, if I just break it into its two components break out flute do um, I'm actually going to add these two together and then add that to time and what that's going to give us is a different value for every point of our mesh you can see it's kind of giving us this sort of weird sort of blobbing effect here on the sphere and if we have a look in the world what it's going to do if we think about how our UVs are applied this pixel here or this corner um, has a different UV value to all the other ones across the uh, thing. Let's hide this tree, it's getting in the way. Um, and so now we're kind of getting a wave that goes diagonally through our, our mesh. And we can control that um, by editing the tiling of our UV. So um, I'm going to make two parameters well position offset, tiling X and tiling Y. Uh, and I'm going to append these together so that this is now a vector 2. So this is two bits of data combined together. And so now I can multiply it by the UV data here. And so I'm able to control the tiling via these parameters. And that just means I can have different values for different versions of the, um, of the waterfall in different places. Um, so if I pop that up, so you can see here at the front now we're getting much more sort of waviness across the front. Um, and if I do the same here, it's going to give me more waviness across the back as well. So front to back, it's going to be controlled by Y along the sides here, along the sort of length, it's going to be controlled by Z, uh, by X. And then we can just up the intensity maybe, make it a bit more visible. Okay, looking kind of cool, looking kind of like a rapids. We know we want a small, subtle amount. Um, let's just scale this down. Let's scale this down a bit. Now we probably don't want it to be along our edges. I'm going to actually mask this out, uh, and I'm going to do that using my vertex color. I know I have a vertex color edge mask, um, just so we're not seeing um, any movement along those final edges, like so. And again, not going to make any difference to my preview sphere, but now these edges here are going to just be flat. Um, not 100% necessary, but um, I think it, it works better that way. Um, for this flat surface here, we're trying to blend into flat bits of water here and here. So by having these edges flat, they should blend a little bit nicer. Um, and actually, it's quite repetitive. It's got a lot of just the same movement happening everywhere. It's because we're only using a single sine wave. To define our motion. So what I'm going to do is just give myself a little bit more space here. And rather than using a single sine wave, I'm going to use multiple sine waves and I'm going to change the period. So this period value here, this is how uh, how frequently or how often um, the sine waves are going to repeat. And so if I have a value of 1 in here, let's do a value of 1.25 and then maybe like 1.7. So not hugely dissimilar 
um, but just a little bit. And then if I add those three together, we're going to get a more interesting interaction between those three sine waves. So if I just open this all out so I can see these things, it's not the best preview necessarily, but maybe you can kind of see. So here we've got very re repetitive pattern uh, represented here with these red stripes. Um, different pattern here, very, repeti very repetitive, but a slightly different scale. Very repetitive again, slightly different scale. And when you start adding and combining these together, you get quite a, um, a sort of a more random thing or something that feels a bit more random because it's going to take a long time for these repeats to sort of sync up again. And there we are. And we're just going to get occasionally big waves, but also small waves. And that's going to help kind of break that up quite nicely. Probably these values are too high. I'm going to leave them high for now so it's a bit, a bit easier to see on the stream. Um, now, a couple more things we haven't done. While well, I'm using time, so whenever I use time, I want to have uh, speed control so I can speed up and slow down these waves. Let's just leave a speed for one for now. Um, and this is this is giving my, me what I kind of like. Um, what I want is like a noisy wave pattern. But if we have a look at our um, our plane here, our mesh, um, it's still pretty square. Um, so what I might try and do is have a second set of world position animation uh, and just animate the whole thing forwards and backwards. So the whole thing's got a bit more. Um, life and movement to it. This kind of works for a nice straight thing. But you can kind of see the straight edges. And so what I'm going to do uh, is just go in and do the same thing again, um, but with a few minor tweaks. So let's do that then. So I know this is all working for this kind of like noise. Um, and I'm going to do it kind of like across. So I'm going to start with my text chord again. And in this case, I'm just going to mask out only the green channel. So the green channel is the one that gives me variation sort of from here to here, because um, that's which way around my sort of UVs are applied to my object. Um, and I'm going to do a multiply. I'm going to call this maybe still WPO, it's still using well position offset. Um, and I'm going to put it profile. And then scale. Uh, and this is going to be a separate set of of maths to create a different set of movement. So that's my tiling. Um, still going to add this to time and then do multiply, in this case, profile speed. And that's going to give us different start points for our sine waves. Uh, and we're going to use some sine waves again. Same principle, but just like I say, slight different setup. And what I want here, I was multiplying by a mask and then multiplying by the direction and multiplying by a scale or an amount. How much am I going to get? Well, I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'm going to multiply and I'm going to do it by the local direction of my mesh. So I want these things to move forwards and backwards. Um, well, I know that the local axis, red, uh, is the forwards and backwards axis. So let's do that. So zero, uh, one, zero, zero, this is the, the red axis. Now, if I leave it like this, this will do red in world space, or this will do the X axis in world space, which isn't far off this mesh, to be fair. It's not very rotated. But if one of my waterfalls was rotated this way, I want to use that local axis, not the world axis. Uh, and so the way we're going to do that is a transform. And I can transform from two different coordinate spaces. So I'm going to transform from local space into world space. So the data we're plugging into world position offset needs to be in world space. And the data we want to use is the local x axis. If I've done this correct, multiply into here. I'm not going to mask this out because I don't mind if the whole thing's moved back and forwards. That's fine. 
Okay, well, scale, I think I've used scale already, haven't I? Yes, I mean intensity. Make sure not to accidentally name the same things twice. I'm just going to plug this one in on its own for now. So I'm going to turn all this off. I know that works. And just have a look at this in the world, get the uh, the numbers right. Now I can't see very much happening yet because my scale value is very low. Ooh. Well, sort of what I want, it's moving in the, uh, the right axes. Um, if I change my scaling up. Ooh. What have I done wrong here? Well, I've actually used the wrong axis. It's not in green, it's red. Red is the one that gives me variation across this axis, not thing. There we go. And now that's going to give me more of the kind of effect that I want. So very small values, uh, or my multiplier here, this is going to give me um, movement across that. Maybe I want sort of two or three, and obviously a much lower intensity value. Maybe something like this and slow it right down as well. So that's just going to give me sort of a slowly changing deformation. If you look at water surfaces, they move over time, but it's not just the surface movement. Sometimes you get more water coming over and this is going to help to sort of break that up. Now, the way we combine well position offsets, they're just offsets, so they're just added. Um, and so if I do that addition first and then this addition and add them together, that's going to give me both the effect of this sort of noisy surface and also the kind of moving surface. Um, so kind of thinking about large scale noise and small scale noise. And so now we're getting this kind of bumpy individual surface. And then the whole thing has this extra layer to it, which is pretty cool. Let's scale that down. A little bit goes a long way. None of it at all, very straight. You see all these straight edges, not very exciting. Just a little bit of movement along that edge. And again, scale this down to make it a bit more realistic. Cool. So I'm just going to put this back to being translucent. Put this back in the right place, try and position it with the world. Let me double check my original material. Oops. Uh, no, I'm not. Apparently, I've closed it. There it is, over here. Set well position, adding this together. Yep, that's all fine. Transform vector. Yep, did that. We'll look at that bit in a bit. We'll look at that bit in a bit. Cool. So let's look at this in the world. There we are. Let's try and scale it back into position. It's looking quite a lot different in color. Let's just change this color value here. I'm going to copy it from the other one, but I think actually this needs to be a lot less saturated. I might see a bit more work on the color. But for now, I'm pretty happy with that. We've got some nice movement happening in the, the world position offset part of the shader. And that kind of little mesh animation, um, it's very, very powerful, can go a long way to sell our effects. And it's actually very cheap because it's all being calculated per vertex. Um, and if we look at the mesh for this model, um, it's actually, what, 320 triangles, 187 verts. There's very few verts compared to how many pixels you see on screen. Um, so you're going to get a nice, optimal, oh, a nice, sort of cheap, performant way of doing, um, doing these things. Ooh. Starting to get there. A couple more things we'll have a look at. Um, some foam, maybe a bit more on the uh, the material colour, um, and then a few little finishing up tweaks as well. But we'll do that in the next video. So as always, thanks to everyone for supporting the channel. Thanks to the patrons. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please do get in touch, uh, and I will see you all next time.